Hi, she's Trixie, and I'm Sarah, and this is our Yarn Worlds, our corner of the internet where we share our craft and the self-care it provides us. That's right. And since we're a mother-daughter duo, and we love the Yarny community, we wanted to be involved with it as well in our videos. We want to be able to show people that you can use yarn to um, help your mental health. And, and in this stressful time, that's what we all need. Yeah. So, Definitely agree. why don't you go ahead and start with... Oh, and this is also episode one. We just wanted to make sure you knew that. Um, we're going to be nervous. We're going to do things that we're not going to do in the later videos, but we're just starting out. So, just learning how to get into the groove of things. I think you should start with your finished object. I only have one. Um, this is a knit hat. It is a order request. Isn't that pretty? She wanted it to be this nice um, baby blue and a black rim, but she wanted it to be gradual. And it, I just kind of made this up as I went along, the color change. And I think it came out pretty nice. It's pretty roomy. It. Yeah. And um, I think she's going to love it. It's a four-sided increase. It just started from the bottom all the way to the top. And yeah, it turned out pretty nice. I hope she enjoys it when she's ready for it. So, I didn't block it because I don't know how to do that. But it's an, it's an acrylic yarn and... Um, Worsted weight? Yeah, it's a four ply. Yeah. So it, sh it should be okay. Yeah. And mine is made out of Mandela, the fairy uh, colorway. And it's a lamp, lap blanket. Very colorful. And it's not even going to be able to be all shown in here because this is doubled over. But I love the colors in it. And then I used what I had for the border. I don't know what this colorway is, but it seemed to go right along with the colors in the blanket, the blanket very well. So I just used that as a border. And yeah, this is my lap blanket. So what are you working on? I have several works in progress. Um, part of it is because I got an order for something right in the middle of working on my projects. And one of them is a project that I use my remnant yarns for. So as I get remnant yarns, I add to it. So it's not exactly something that's just going to be something I get done all at one time. But I'll start off with the first one. This is a... It's called a virus blanket. I was introduced to this pattern by Fiber Spider. You can find him on YouTube at, at Fiber Spider. And uh, I'm sure this is a pre-existing um, pattern. I don't know who from, but sure is pretty. Uh, he shows tutorials on many different free patterns, and this was one of them. And so I really would check him out if you are a beginner or you have, want video tutorials of, like, he does shawls and blankets the most and some hats. And he's a very good crocheter that can show you visual step-by-step and that's why tutorials. we love YouTube, because you get to learn all these new things from the community out there, from everybody, and you just, you have um, all this knowledge in, in YouTube that you can partake of. Definitely. And this, uh, this is going to be a blanket that's for my very oversized chair in <laughs> the living room. And um, it's a brown chair, and my uh, couch is more of this, like, taupe tan. And so I wanted to draw them together by making a blanket in that color. Uh, it's a four-ply yarn, again, acrylic. I want to say this is a Karen yarn, 
or like a like a one pound super saver sort of yarn. Right. Um, so sure is pretty. That's one of my whips. You can show up here, yours. And mine is also um, four ply, but I'm trying to make a. I'm trying to um, create a shawl. Um, and this yarn, I don't, I don't know the colorway. I don't even know. I, I, I bought it a long time ago when the coronavirus was just started, and we're in November now. So I can't remember what the name of it is, but I just thought it was so pretty. All the different variations on the color. So lacy. Yeah. So, so frilly. I'm, I'm uh, creating a pattern for this, and maybe when it's all completed, I can um, introduce it to you guys. So, yeah, this this is just a shawl that I'm doing, and uh, I just love, 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 love the color. It's very soft for an acrylic. Um, I wish you knew what the brand was. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking it's Lion Brand, but I'm not I'm not a hundred percent on that. But um, it, if I can acrylic? find it again, I will. Yes. Yeah. If I can find it again, I will get the band. Um, I'll buy another one. I'll get the band and I'll bring it in so that you guys can buy it too. Okay. Um, again, like I said, I have a lot of whips. Um, my next one is almost a completed. Um, so, story time. <laughs> I was living in a, a trailer that ended up getting infested, and during that time, my mom let me come and live with her with my two kids while my husband had to stay there to make sure that no one. <laughs> took their stuff. <laughs> took opportunity as they saw that we weren't there. And um, now we're in a new place, and I'm very blessed and thankful for that. I am but, too. <laughs> um, while I was at my mom's, I was, this is where I really opened up into this community, and it was very, very welcoming. Yes, because I've been doing this for a very long time, and I have loved YouTube for a very long time. It's been my main uh, social media outlet, I would say. I never um, put a video up, but it's a place I go to unwind a lot. And I didn't even realize that there was a community out there. Right. And when my mom started showing me videos, it was... It got me in the mood. Yes. It, I really wanted to start really working on stuff. I had to put a lot of my stuff in storage just because of everything that was going on. I had two kids, two under two, and yes. it wasn't something I had a lot of time for. But like we want to talk about later... This is a grounding, like an anchor project, where an anchor craft, where you're just, you're able to focus. It, your mind is just able to do this one thing over and over again, yeah. like in stitching or in, and it's mindless. And sometimes it can just pull on a creative aspect in you and pull the the maker out of you. Yes. And that's what happened here. So I was inspired to make a sweater. And it originally was going to be for me. I know. It would have fit <laughs> me. Um, but no, this was originally quite long and would have... Uh, and I started from bottom up. And I like the colors, but I didn't really want it for me. And eventually, I just got inspired to make something for my daughter. And so I am a... I've kind of always been able to kind of make something up as I go. And mm -hmm. I was just... I got the arms opened, and then I made a collar, and I made the... So cool. Um, uh, the border, I guess. And I just have to do the sleeves. I already have buttons for it. Yeah. I already have everything else. But... I've actually never made a sweater before. This was supposed to be my first one, so I actually really don't know how to do sleeves from this angle because I know that you could do sleeves like straight out, but the thing is that this isn't a drop shoulder where it's very boxy and so it would just fall off the shoulder and you could just make a arm from there. This is very right. fitted, so I don't know how to make a gradual uh, 
uh, arm. So I don't and, even know if my daughter will ever actually be able to wear it. She She's knitting this. I yeah. would like to make a sweater, but I'm going to crochet it. So I crochet, she knits, but she also crochets also. But Yeah, because that's where the virus... It, it's um, just it a very um, meditative thing to do and when when you have um, so much going on in your life so many stressful things you need something to just ground you and um, doing something uh, repetitive helps you to do that but you're also turning that yarn into a fabric and making it into something useful and I'm a practical person so that that falls on my practical side that I just love. So, yeah. Also, uh, my mom's mom, my, my grandmother Udell, she, she crafted with yarn all the time. And I was never inspired when she was here alive. And she, um, before she died, she made sure that Sarah had all of her needles and all of her yarn because she knew that she was interested in it. That, to me, is, um, it, it, it makes me happy because, it, but Sarah can make things without even using a pattern and her one request was that Sarah learned how to read patterns. So we are endeavoring to learn how to do that um, and even to write our own patterns so that someday we can have patterns for you. So, that's my story time. But, and then, uh, what do we... I'm not even done with my whips yet. I know. I'm just... Keep going. I just wanted to bring that up. Oh, I know. You just... It seemed like you were ready to go on to the next thing. No, no. I just wanted to make sure that Grandma Yuda was brought into this. Yeah. She was a very, very, uh... Passionate lady. Very, um very focused yeah she completed things and she could make anything out of yarn it was yeah, incredible it, yeah um so this project is the project that i mentioned before it is my um a scrap uh what what would you name it like um the scrappy yarn it's the project that I kind of use all my remnant yarns on, uh, especially if they're in the same way, um, weight. Um, and it is, again, a pattern that was shown to me here on YouTube from Fiber Spider. Very much, very much recommend him. <laughs> um, it is the uh, Revulet shawl. R-I-V-U-L-E-T shawl. Revulet? Review that. Um, pretty. Yeah, I I really like it. It has a natural bow in the collar area, so it will like hold on your shoulders, and it has such a beautiful like almost like webby. Yeah, it looks like a web. A web um, pattern, and yeah, I've just been using a lot of my four ply acrylic yarns up on this but I had to put this down and the reason why is because of my next one um, so I had a friend so my mom mentioned I've been able to do many of my patterns uh, just or read patterns visually so I'll see a finished project from someone and I can pull um, the inspiration of their finished product and I can gather most of the information up in my head and kind of compile it and um, I take a piece of paper and I generally can guesstimate yeah. <laughs> um, what it, the process it took them to make it. It's not obviously perfect. I do not, um, again, I don't say that I know. This is Sarah's interpretation of the project yeah. as she sees it. Yeah, and so I had a friend who was on Facebook and raving about these socks that she saw, and she really wanted a pair for herself. And she was asking her friends on, on Facebook if anyone knew how to make these socks, and they're not my style. But she really likes them, 
and uh, I am endeavoring to complete them. These pretty. sock. So pretty. It has a, um, it was a long tail cast on and it has a cabled um, brim and then I did uh, a popcorn stitch and then to show off the ombre that she chose I just did a regular uh, stockinette and then she wanted I kind of wanted to make sure that it was tight around the calf because this is so baggy uh, that I just did uh, knit two purl two and then I am just doing a natural you know yeah. heel um, it was just a reinforced heel flap with a heel turn and uh, just the normal uh, building of the sock. I do have a bit of a cable that's like a braid in the front of the, on the top of the sock. Um, and every separation of the, um, the differences of the sock, I did a, like a garter, like a five, a five, um, rows of a, like a garter stitch. So it would have like a separation. Um, these socks, when finished, are supposed to have like these big um, flowers that I will end up sewing on top of them. She only wants one. We'll see. One pair. Um, no, one sock. Oh, one sock? Uh, no. Sorry. One flower on each sock. Oh, okay. Um, she has a couple of... A couple different ones inspired by these photos. There's more than one photo that she wants me to try to uh, replicate. Um, I did try. I did try to find a pattern for these socks, but honestly, I don't know what they were called. Like, they were just, it was just a photo, you know, and I, you know, I can only go off of so much. There was no water marbling on these photos or anything, so I couldn't even try to find anything to figure them out. So I just kind of am going off of what I saw. Um, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing this since I was like seven, eight, I would say. Um, uh, but I still have things I need to improve on because I'm showing you the nice side. The reason why I say that is because when you turn it over, um, I'm working in the round, but if you can see, it's, they're not perfectly level on uh, where you can see where the seam is where I'm going into the next stitch, or the next row. And I'm planning on taking a, a um, yarn needle and trying to, uh, with the right of the same color and kind of like evening it out, like sewing stitches together to try to even it out a little so it visually looks like there's nothing wrong with it. Well, but sometimes you have to fudge things a little bit to make it look. Well, I know that I will, I know that there's probably tutorials on YouTube <laughs> that I could have um, watched but I really wanted to get these done for her and so far she's enjoying it and I think she'll like it um, and she's not gonna know the the um, so the mistakes at all you're gonna see it because you know I but know. she's not gonna what? see it so I don't know. worry about it so I know much. but still it's I, don't, I, I guess I really don't realize how much of a perfectionist I am until I'm making it for someone else. Yeah, that's true. So. It, that's everybody, though. Uh, so. um, well, um, I would say let's go into story time. You want to grab something to drink? Yeah. Oh. I stole my husband's coffee mug. <laughs> I'm having hot cocoa because it's cold here in Michigan. Yes, it is. And I am having some tea, my yogi tea. And it's uh, Egyptian licorice and it smells so good. But it also tastes good. And I, I, um, tea is something, if it doesn't taste good, I'm not going to drink it. And if it's just bland, I'm not going to drink it. But this is not bland. And you don't even have to add anything to it, so that's that's good for me. But um, yeah, we never mentioned that we we live in Michigan in the USA, and um, so we get that time of year where we get to get cozied up. I mean, we're just um, 
coming out of the colors of the trees. They're all falling on the ground now. Yeah. And it was frosty out this morning. I had to be careful coming out of my house. Um, we have a ramp that goes straight to the garage door. And um, it, it's slick. And so you have to be careful going out of the house into the garage when it's icy or it's uh, frosty on the ramp because it's just... An if, ice if, rink. Yes. <laughs> so... We don't have and, sleds. Yeah. And two days ago, it was in the 70s, and today we have frost so that we end up having to almost slip and slide down the, on the ramp. That is Michigan for you folks. I mean, you just never know what you're going to get. So and true. we are coming into the winter season, and winter for uh, Michigan can be a variety of things as well. So, you know, we we use our mittens, and we are living in the mittens. So that is that's okay with me. I I'm I've always loved Michigan, so I wouldn't want to live in a state where you don't get any of the different kind of weather or uh, the the seasons at all. It, I love every season. Um, I especially love spring um, because that's when my birthday is. And uh, but Sarah, she was born in the winter. Well, so was my son. He was born in the winter also, and my stepson was born in the winter. Who? Yeah. It that's just the way it goes, folks. But so you got anything to tell for your story time? Um. Well. I think for me, I mentioned before that, you know, this whole entire channel, we want to dedicate to the mental health aspect of a craft. Yeah. And crafting in and of itself, it doesn't have to be with yarn. Um, most of the time, uh, just getting into the groove of something else that... Being releases the yes. endorphins. It almost puts you in a meditative state because you're doing the same thing over and over again. Something that gives you a passion and joy. We don't, I feel, value the craft anymore in Western society. We almost look at it as a... a some people, some people can make it work and the rest of the time most people are just wasting their time. Yeah, that's and, a lot of things. And um, it's sad because this is something that God has given us. Yes. Uh, it's a God-given gift to be able to create. Mm -hmm. And um, he created us to create. That's right. And I mean... I mean, I am not assuming that everyone that's going to watch our videos is just female, but, um, you know, even in Proverbs, when it talks about the virtuous woman, it talks about a woman that takes wool and spins it and creates with it and is able and to make... It. dyes it. Dyes it and can make linen and can be her own entrepreneur. Yes. She can buy and do things and be a businesswoman. And, you know, I feel like a lot of people don't look at that side of the virtuous woman. We right. always look at the the good housekeeper and the, um, the silent type, the one that always is very reserved. And yet there's a side of her that is bursting with creativity. Right. And she is able to be... I'm not saying that she doesn't need a man. That's not exactly what right. I'm saying. What I'm she, saying she's is a that good wife she's and able a good to provide. Yes. She is still grounded and still able to do something and bring something to the table. Exactly. And I enjoy the aspect, especially with my husband, that yes. he loves what I do. And he loves the crafty side of her. Um... He's very supportive half the time when he sees a yarn on a good uh, and a good deal, he just buys it Cause, and he because he knows that I generally can go off on stuff without a pattern, he'll just throw ideas out at me or he'll look online and be like, "I want this." And but he even he went, even went to the store and he called me up and he said, I found some yarn here. It's on sale, a really good sale. It's Bernat. And uh, it's usually like uh, $10.99 uh, skein. And it is like 
I can't remember how many we got for... I think it was... We got six. It was three for three for the price of one or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was a good price. And I said, yes, snag some for, up for me. And so he got some for Sarah and for me. It's and the, But he's that kind of person. He will do that for us just because he knows that's what we love to do. Yeah, he, he is very much a, uh, I feel like, oh, what would you name it? He's... He's an encourager. Yes. He, um, uh, luckily, he's good at deciphering what is right to encourage. But he's, <laughs> except maybe with some of the fr uh, friends, our friends' kids. Um, <laughs> but um, he has a respect for what I do, and I yes. understand that there might be some family members out there that might see this as a waste of time or old fashioned or just not gonna amount to anything and I just wanna tell you that the 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 warm feeling that you get when you are able to start and you're making something and even if uh, in the process it's good or even if you're one of those people that it's not about the process, it's about the finished object. Yes. Regardless of what you Get, uh, the, uh, what, regardless of what brings you the joy in it. Yes. It's okay. It's okay that you are you. It's okay that this is what you have found to help you, especially in this time. Yes. You know, it's good to be able to sit down and when your hands are busy, it gives your mind a rest and you know, knowing that you're getting something done. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, that God has the rest. And he's got the purpose for the whole thing. Yeah. He He created us with a purpose, and creativity is part of that purpose. And I I feel lucky that my husband as well is, he's a creative soul, and so am I. And yeah. he will... Uh, encourage my side and I encourage his side and um, I think it makes a better marriage when you can encourage each other in whatever craft it is that mm -hmm. you do yeah um, and but for me yarn and words and like I can I, I've written books I have um, yeah, she done has a yarn. Lot of, she has a lot of published work. Not um, whether it be uh, poems or uh, books, and she has some in progress. But I, I, I like to put what I'm doing currently into these books, and um, but I also love the yarny side because it's quiet. I can sit down. I'm not bothering anybody. I just I bring it out. It's quiet, and I can just sit there and and watch TV with my husband and still Get be it. doing something and getting things done. She says quiet because he his craft is with wood and it's obnoxious. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, it, he's great with it, but it's obnoxious. Um, uh, sorry, Dad. Um, but. Um, another thing I want to say, um, as a mother of two, currently, um, my daughter is two and my son is just turned 10 months. Yes. Um, it's, it, it can be hard, especially if you're young and trying to get, it, um, doing something, like I said, I'm trying to make these socks, um, and... I'm trying to, I'm making stuff to sell, and um, it's very hard when you have younger kids sometimes, and... Uh, Who want to do what mommy does. Either want to do what mommy does, or doesn't want mommy to spend their time, her time doing something else than being with them, and um, the thing is, is that I have found that with the chaos that I've been going Sorry about that. Okay. Um, our camera <laughs> died. 
Um, but going on from what I was talking about, um, as a mom of two, like I was saying, one being two, one being ten months old, it can be very hard for me to get stuff done. Um, but with what I've been going through, like I said, um, in the story time, uh, my house was completely overrun by cockroaches. And uh, we're not filthy people, I promise. They, ju uh, they end up coming from a storage unit. Um, I was taking things out of a storage unit that I had been sharing with my brother and he was going to end the payment and he needed me to get all my stuff out of there and I went to grab all my stuff and as I was bringing it to my trailer, they just went crazy. And uh, we had we had to have a medium place to go until we could find another place because hey, guess what? We weren't exactly ready to move yet. Um, we were planning on it, but we were going to wait till tax season. And so when we moved over to my mom's and we started watching you guys, it meant so much to be revived because it had been so hard. Um, my two-year-old is not the shy or um, quiet type. Um, she is very spunky and... Very extrovert. Yeah, she's a bit of an extrovert. She's a bit of... She has a lot of energy. And I, you could say that all two-year-olds do, but I've met two-year-olds that can be very... Reserved. Reserved. Mm -hmm. Um, she is... Not. Um, she has a lot of energy. She is very extroverted. And she's a go, 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 go. If we're stopped in the car uh, for a red light, she tells us to go. Yes. Um, and she's, I call her my warrior princess. She's born to lead, and I know she is. Yes. But it can be very hard that even though I know that this is something that God's going to use, this character yes. that she is, um, it can be very hard when right now I can't explain to her why life is taking all these turns. Right. And she's one of those kids that when you get her in a routine, that's what we're doing next. Yeah. Um, Mom, yesterday we did it like this, so today we need to do it like this. Yes. And um, having to switch cold turkey to living with my parents and me... Her and my 10-month-old had to sleep all in one room. And, and they were used to sleeping on their own. Well, not only that, but I had just came out of major surgery yeah. three days prior to this. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, not three days. Um, I came home from major surgery three days prior to this. Yep. And they started to live with me. But it was a help at the same time for me because I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. get up, I couldn't do anything, and I needed the help, but at the same time, they needed the help as well. And so we just fell into the yarny world of yeah. YouTube, and it, it was, helped us so much. And what really sparked the mental health message yeah. that we're trying to say yeah. is that with all that happening... I was a mess. I mean, I wasn't like a crying mess or anything like that, but I just felt like I didn't know what I could pull on because I was trying to be so strong for my kids, but my husband couldn't be with me right. pretty much at all. And so I was parenting as a mom and a dad, not his fault. He had to he take, had to work full time plus to, stay at the trailer. Stay at the trailer, and and I had to take care of trying to find a new place, and it was crazy. And my parent and I couldn't rely on my mom to watch the kids while that was all happening. My dad works full time, so he wasn't available to just hey watch the kids. And they have a wood stove, and my two year old followed by my ten month old because yes, he started walking at seven months. <laughs> It, Let's make this even harder. Yeah. <laughs> it was hard. And then all of a sudden my mom was showing me all these videos and uh, during their nap time. And all of a sudden it just felt like an anchor in right. the storm. For both of us. It was just... I can do this. Yeah. 
there's something I can look forward to every single day. Yeah. There's something that whenever I have a minute, I can do this while I'm sitting down watching the, uh, watching my kids' <sighs> favorite movie the hundredth time. <laughs> I can um, I can do this while listen to her telling me this long drawn out story again. <laughs> I can do this and have uh, still be able to watch my kid without right. it being bored because it's not that I don't interact with my kids. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that sometimes they're playing on their own. I didn't have dishes or laundry or anything to do. I didn't have my normal housework. And so I'm sitting there being like, I can't just sit and put blocks on top of blocks every single day. And being on my phone is not the way that you parent. I'm not saying that it, there isn't a point in time in this technological age that you can, but when I bring up my phone, my kids want to be on it. And it's one of those things where it's like, I try to save my phone for when they're asleep. Right. I just try. And um, when I pulled out the yarn, because I was inspired to, yes. and I was doing it, and I was listening to YouTubers share their journey with their yarn and their crafts, and I just felt like there was a community. Yes. And one of them was saying that... Um, I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about how it's actually therapeutic because to do the same thing over and over again stimulates a part of your brain that cr it it's demanding focus. Right. And when your life is not in focus, no matter how little the project is, or the book that you're reading is, or whatever is holding your attention, right. it brings you into focus, it anchors you in the storm, right. and it feels like you can get it done because you're in control of something. You're in control of something. <laughs> and yes. it helps. Yes. I mean, it just helps. And I, I can't think... The people in my life that have just opened this world to me just from a young age. And I am so grateful that my kids will just sit there and just let me do it because... Right. And they they emulate her. They Olivia will... Um... If I put it down, <laughs> she jumps on the couch and puts it on, her, uh, on yes. her lap. And though she doesn't really understand what's happening, she'll just pull on the arm. And act like she's doing something, and she'll just sit there and wait till I come back. And my son generally, because I have a, generally a notebook next to me, because generally I'm making my own pattern, and I have to be able to make a duplicate of whatever right. I do in case someone wants me to do it again. I'm make, <laughs> I'm making it, and I'm writing it down, and he's just like, "Ooh, pencil, mom, look it, I can write too," mm -hmm. and. He, but that's the fun of kids. I mean, they want to do what mommy's doing. Yeah. So. It's definitely a blessing. And, and isn't that how we are, though? We want to do what the father's doing, which is God the Father. And he's a creative soul. I mean, just look around. He, he's made all the flowers. Uh, even just the, okay, if you just think flowers. All the different types, all the different colors, all the different... Um, Ways, ways that they they um, can be useful in our our lives, all the different um, locations that they flourish. Where they weather. Yes, is is, then that's just one one subject. I mean, there's a whole vast world of creative things that the Lord has made, and if you um, want to get inspired by colors or uh, just or anything, walk. just go on a walk. So, you know, you got to realize that, that God is in everything. And He's inside of us as well. And and that is more than I can fathom. But it's, it's the best thing about me is Him inside of me. And I'm just so grateful for that. Yeah. So, um, you want to do tips and tricks? Um, 
Or is that not something we're going to do today? And no, I um, I don't have anything set up for it. I was going to show how to do the invisible join that I have been using a lot um, recently. And I thought maybe some people might enjoy seeing it. And um, But maybe next time. Yeah. Uh, I am... I, I just didn't even think to set it up. Um, I would like to thank you for um, joining us today. I would like to thank you for watching to the end if you have. <laughs> I realize that this is very, very unprofessional because we might not have a great editing system yet. And so if this is very choppy, I'm very sorry. If this is very improv, it's because it is. <laughs> and I would just like to thank you for joining us on this journey and letting us share our craft with you because we and, enjoy and, it. And while we're on that subject, what's your favorite craft? Um, yeah. Like, as as, as um, YouTubers, we have all kinds of creativity. What is your favorite craft today? Yeah, what, Put what, that down in the comments. Yeah, please tell us in the comments what is it that really... What is the craft or your pa favorite pastime that puts you at center? Right. Because maybe some of you out there need something else. Maybe you've tried crochet and it doesn't work for you. Maybe you've tried knitting and it doesn't work for right. you. Maybe you've tried woodwork and it's just not your thing. Please, down in the comments, just share your passion, what centers you, and maybe we all learn inspire. From each other. Yeah. Yeah. Just inspire and be able to share your goodness with the world. Yes. Okay. But, and so, we want to just say... Stitch your, stitch your way to mental health. Yes. And God bless. God bless. Thank you.